Welcome back to Rubem here on Free Sports. Joined still in the studio, the legend Dave Woods and Jamie Jones Buchanan. You forgot a name when you're talking about England. I forget a name. Just come to me like an epiphany, Jake Connor. Jake Connor. Mate, mid-season international, outstanding. And I think uh, Jimmy Bray won it, our cameraman, that said. I think he's been sensational this year. It's been a real revelation, Dave. What's your thoughts? Well, I mean, it was a revelation that test, wasn't it? Because he was supposed to be going to Papua New Guinea with you, wasn't he? Because he was originally named in that uh, England night squad. And then suddenly he was elevated into the uh, into the Denver Test, and he was fantastic when he came on in the Denver Test, wasn't he? And yeah, if he just had a bit more confidence on the field, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be more. Does he get stuck into you as well? Oh mate, he gives it to me all the time. It's like to the point where I've I've just started laughing at it now because it's actually funny and he's abusing me on the floor. It's funny. Time to go to Toronto. It's uh, it's been a mad few days. Are you tired? I slept on the plane. I look forward to any opportunity I get to go to Toronto anyway. Right, let's go now and uh, see what Toronto has got to offer the rugby league family. Welcome to Toronto, Canada. Canada, a country that's given us so much. Poutine, maple syrup, Brian Adams, Celine Dion, Ryan Reynolds, Justin Bieber, and of course, Drake. This is a wonderfully multicultural city. It's a sporting hub. The Maple Leafs, the Blue Jays, the Raptors, the Argonauts, and now, of course, the Toronto Wolfpack. Ourselves at Rugby are here all weekend, bringing together a guide of what to do while you're in this wonderful city. Thousands of fans over the next few years will flock to see their team play in Toronto, and we're going to give you the beginner's guide. As you can see, the Toronto Wolfpack boys on their captain's run. It's the day before the big game. Every single team lets their captain take the session and marshal the boys around the field, perfecting the sets that's going to hopefully win them the game against the Witness Vikings tomorrow. So how are you finding Toronto life? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's a good city, weather's nice, so yeah, so far so good. Well, give us Mason Cairns Brown top couple of places to go and see and do. Um, if you like food, there's this great place called uh, Uncle Tetsu's Cheesecake, which is the best cheesecake I've had out here. Obviously there's Niagara Falls, which is really good. Um, but yeah, the food's here really good, so there's loads of food places you can check out. How have you found the Toronto fans? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a party every time there's a game. There's a massive... Uh, beer tents and everything, it's like a little mini festival. Um, but I think that's really good for the game, the atmosphere is really uh, good. Last week was, uh, I think it's the loudest it's been so far, so um, the fans really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, it's totally different to English Rugby League, but it's good. I feel like I'm on top of the world. It's a good job I'm not scared of heights. The Rogers Centre's just underneath us. And if you can't tell already, I'm up the top of the CN Tower. A big thanks to everyone at the CN Tower for letting us come up here and film. And I'm joined by Kelly from Divine Sports Travel. Kelly, what a fantastic city Toronto is. An amazing city. I've been to lots of cities and I must say Toronto is definitely one of my favourites. 
you've got a really important role to play for the Wolfpack because you're welcoming all the fans over from all the different clubs, bringing them along, putting them up, looking after them when they land in Toronto. And it's, it's a job with real responsibility for this season and for next season. We're, we're just trying to showcase Toronto, uh, really let them know that, you know, rugby league can grow as a sport and just show them what the city's all about, really. The views are immense and we've got floor to ceiling windows to look out 360 degrees, but how high are we right now? At the moment we are 346 metres high. And how tall is the CN Tower? The CN Tower itself right at the top is 553.33 metres high. How many people per year come along and visit the CN Tower? Approximately 1.9 million people come and visit the tower and what can I say, can you blame them? It's amazing. Fans are out in force. Hey, John, John, you're one of the lucky ones. You won a competition to come all the way to Toronto, so you're even a Freeman's mate. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Would you recommend this trip to other other fans of uh, Super League teams if Toronto get up to Super League? Yeah, definitely. Better than going uh, Lee or something like that, isn't it? To win the competition, you had to tag somebody on Facebook in the competition to win. Yeah. Your missus tagged you in it. Yeah. You tagged her back. You won the competition and you dumped her. <laughs> and you bought your dad instead. Yeah. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, he's not only the bravest man in witness, he's the ultimate lad. I think it'll be a good game. If we play well, we could do it. If we don't play well, we'll get hammered. Tomorrow's game, well, it could go either way. Yourself, it could be the same game as it was against Kassad last year. Could be two points in it for us and not two on so. Definitely fancy it, and the team are up for it. I've spoken to many of the players because they were on the court on the play with us, and they're really, really pumped up for this game. They've not, they've not given in by nowhere. And there's a VIP who's new since I last came to Toronto, Jefferson Wolf. Jefferson, are you pleased with the performances of the Wolfpack so far? And can you see the boys getting the win today against Widness? I think, I think that's a definite yes. But I, am I ready yet for the game? I think I, I feel ready. I've got everything ready. But today is apparently it's a cowboy theme or a country theme. Do I need any accessories? Oh, Stetson's on. Let's go inside the den. is it to, to actually cement a place in such a busy sporting city for the Wolfpack? 
we've got to create an event because through the summer, every single weekend, we're up against another event. That might be a concert, it might be a beer festival, it might be a public holiday or the Pride Festival. So I, I think we see this is an event goer's city. It's a big city with a lot, a lot of people living here and a lot of people living around. Um, we know we share fans with the Jays. We know we share fans with TFC. We'll have fans go to the Jays after this game. And when we play late, they play early, people rock up. So um, I think as long as we've got something that's a cool event on a summer's day, um, we're, we're not worried about other teams. I don't think they're particularly worried about us either. If the team do get to Super League, or when they do, because it might not be this year, but it could be uh, next year, how good is, is the Wolfpack in Super League going to be for the city of Toronto? Because I, for one, know there'll be thousands and thousands of fans getting on planes and coming to this great city. Well, I think, essentially, the, the Wolfpack in Super League would look a lot like it does today. I think we'd, we'd hope or aspire to get a thousand plus travelling fans from some of those bigger teams in a regular season game. Um, but the fans will come over, they go three or four nights in Toronto. We share weekends with the Blue Jays. Uh, we've got Niagara Falls, which I think you guys are going to tomorrow. Um, but I think the Wolfpack will just integrate itself into part of the Toronto weekend. To VIP guests today, and uh, we've got Scott, who's a Hall of Famer for broadcasting, uh, famous in the hockey world. Uh, why are you here today, Scott? Well, I'm here because uh, I've been curious, been hearing so much about the Wolfpack and how it's gaining momentum and uh, becoming a very popular team and a very popular sport over here. <laughs> the understanding of the crowd now, they seem to have really bought into the sport, they seem to understand the sport. The Toronto people are passionate about sport, I I've gathered that much. Do you think the Wolfpack has got a lot of room to grow in the market. I think they do, and uh, you know it, it takes time, and it's. Uh this is a market that has a lot of professional sports teams. It's a hockey market, it's baseball, football's fighting itself right now to regain momentum. And, and I think the Wolfpack are really kind of gaining some momentum and it takes some time to get there, but all the reviews have been very positive. They've having some success. Winning is always the best marketing tool. So I think it has the opportunity to grow. End of the game, 2012. Bittersweet for you, Bucky, today because your old club is it, being relegated before the end of the game because of the Toulouse result. But it must be tough to see your pals going down, but massive for the Toronto Wolfpack. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you know, a lot of them are still my good mates, and I, I keep up with uh, up to date with them and talk to them every week. And I'm um, absolutely gutted for them. You obviously know you don't want to see anyone going down, being relegated. But at the same time, like you said, uh, Toulouse beat whole KR, so it puts us above them, I think. So. Um, move on to next week and hopefully we can keep ourselves safe and go up. Without a doubt, mate, a good result in Leeds could take you up automatic. But I think today has been about the fans. The fans yeah. here have been unbelievable. Yeah. Talk to you about the fans and how shocked you've been since you've joined the club. Yeah, like, mate, I think 8,000, I think they announced before. And, you know, the fans are massive. You know, I think they're just starting to learn now what, what, what the game's about. And they're cheering for certain parts of the game. And, mate, they're, they're massive. And obviously, we appreciate every one of them that come out. And they love, love to just see a good game of rugby league. Everyone's been on 10 tucks. How was it to play in for you? Yeah, man, it was, it was exactly what you said. Um, you know, walking around on eggshells before the, before the game. But, uh, you you know, it was a good quality game. It was something we needed. We, we weren't great last week, but we come out with the win, and um, you know that's a sign of a good team. We're not, a, you know, we're, we're not there yet, but um, you know the commitment and the, the attitude of our team, second to none, and um, you know we're ready to roll on. Let's talk about one negative, one positive. Negative is witness going down. Obviously, a great club, and we'll be back. Hugely sad. Um, my whole rugby career, witness has been on the tip of the tongue in relation to greatness and players, the old Norton Park and. 
no home pass. So I just, yeah, a sad, a sad moment, but that's the way they build the competition. And I said before the game, it was either them or us. So we got to, we got to play well to enable to get what we wanted. Canadian football. The Argonauts, a local Toronto team, up against one of their biggest rivals. The crowd, 30,000 strong, into it. Let's see what Canadian football has to offer. This guy is dressed up as Marcus with the hair. <laughs> Guys, you two are the most passionate Argos fans going. How are you finding this evening? I'll tell you what, this is a must win. We're taking home the W, baby. It's all us. It's all about the double blue tonight. Oh, oh. oh no. <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> edit that out. You got to edit that out. <laughs> Boo. Love what the Wolfpack are doing. We're building a nice grass route. Uh, we're just like the TFC, the Toronto uh, Football Club used to do. And, and then now they're getting crowds of 28 to 30,000 people. And I believe the Toronto Wolfpack can easily do that. ticking off a massive tick on my bucket list right now. I'm stood with the beautiful, the amazing Niagara Falls in the background. We've been really kindly joined by Joanna Gasparato, who is our tour guide for today and a very important lady right here at Niagara Falls. <laughs> Can you give me a bit of history about the falls and how they were created? Because it's really fascinating. Absolutely. So what you see behind us here dates back to the last ice age, about 18,000 years wow. ago far beyond your time and my time. So 12,500 years ago is actually when the creation of Niagara Falls happened. So uh, the falls actually started about 16 kilometers down this Niagara River. So a little bit north and then every year uh, Niagara Falls moves back one foot. How many people per day comes through and actually journeys on the home blower. It's pretty wild. In the middle of the summer, we're looking at about 20,000 people per day. 20, Our record, we've done as many as 24,000 in a day. So. 24,000, and how many is that in a year? So we'll do over 2 million a year. Last year, we did about 2.3 million people. And that's only nine months as well. That's right, that's right. We don't even get to operate the whole season. Can you give me some facts I can share with the boys? Absolutely. So. 
Millions of people flock to Niagara Falls on a yearly basis. And it's not just, of course, just for our boat tour, but just to see and witness and experience the falls and, and for the amount of water. So there's about 500 waterfalls in the world that are bigger than Niagara Falls, but there's no other waterfall in this world that sees the most amount of water as our Canadian horseshoe. So it actually sees about 6 million bathtubs of water go over Niagara Falls every one minute. What a weekend here in Toronto. The wolf pack are certainly here to stay. David Argyle and Kelly from Divine Sports Travel, thank you for having the Rugby AM team along. To play us out of this feature right now, check out these vocals by Reality, singing the Canadian anthem, What A Weekend. Here's a look back on some of the best bits. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patron We see they rise, our true, no strong and free from far and wide. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. You've seen Toronto there in all its glory. Do you think, one question, do you think they'll get to Super League this year? I think it's going to be tough because I think they're going to have to go to London. I reckon it's going to be London against Toronto in, in the million pound, in the million pound game. game in London. So it's going to be tough. But I mean, I mean, I mean, seeing that, it's just wow. I mean, we, we see pictures of it, but when you get that behind the scenes stuff, it's just hairs come from the back of your neck, don't they? That's fun. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. You've been there yet? I've been to Toronto. I've not been watching a rugby league game there yet. No. But um, but yeah, well, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going next year. We'll get you over there. What happens if it's a Toronto Catalan Challenge Cup final? Well, well, you know, people say, what happens if Catalan get there this year? You just suck it up and get on with it, don't you? Yeah. But uh, you market it. You market it. You know, wow, Canada against France in London. Yeah. You get rugby league at the highest level. You sell it. I mean, we've had a NFL games. In yeah. Wembley, and they sell out, so why can't you sell that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. I love that attitude. I love it. That's yeah. the attitude we all need. Right, it's time for Team of the Week this week. They run through this at the fullback position, Ben Barber. And the wings, Greg Eden from Castle Tigers and Chris Centrone from Toulouse. In the centres, Michael Shenton, Castle Tigers and Bastian Adair from Toulouse. Halfbacks, Johnny Lomax Saints and Jared Samet, London Broncos. Props, Liam Watts, Cass and Darcy Lussick, Toronto Wolfpack. In number nine, Brad Dwyer, Lee Drynos. In the back row, Corey Patterson, Toronto Wolfpack and Greg Bird, Catalan. And uh, number 13, Joe Bretherton from Wigan Warriors. And time now for your amateur try of the week. Fifth position, Jaden Lehman from Leeds Underdogs Under 7s. Fourth position, our first girl, Evie Ray Woodward, uh, West Leeds Under 12s. Uh, third position, Oliver Lawton, Burn, Burton Wood Bulldogs under eights. Second position, Alfie Cooper, Haydock Newbies. Oh, oh okay. Where are you going, lad? Go on, Alfie. Go on, Alfie. Go on, Alfie. Go on, And in first position on Cutsack Raiders under nines, Martin Adamus. Congratulations, those junior tries. Adamus, there you go. Dave, thank you for coming to oh, I've loved it. Please, please, Brilliant. please, will you sign 
got sign some names on here. The famous table. It is I don't know. I'm going to have to sign underneath because these are all proper superstars. <laughs> no, they? no. You've... Malcolm Rayleigh. Oh, yeah, really. Oh, I can't oh, sign the same oh, table oh, as Malcolm Rayleigh. Oh, hey, we've got some good ones there. Best of luck for rest of this year. What do you do in the off season? Go on holiday. <laughs> where, are you going? where are you going this year? Sri Lanka. Because <laughs> you're married to the game as well. Yeah, yeah. My wife, Julie. Julie Stott is the Daily uh, Stars. Rugby League correspondent, so... All you do is talk about We just talk about all the time. No, we don't. We talk about other stuff as well. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing. Who's going to win the grand final? St. Helens. St. Helens. He's I gone like Saints. It. Like it. You've gone Wigan. I've gone Cass. We'll see what happens. Thanks for watching Rugby. Good night. God bless. We'll see you next week for more Rugby League chat.